Salut on and welcome to this month's Markov's Gallery. My name is Scott and I'm here with Sam. Howdy pilgrims. And we are going to look at the stuff that we saw in September. I got it right this time. You could just make it easy for yourself and just say last month. Yeah. <laughs> yep, so we're going to go through everything that we saw last month that was really cool and we enjoyed and we're going to share it and talk about it now. So the first pick of the month, as always, is Wild West Sextus. In fact, we both liked this picture, but I'm, I'm the one that's going to talk about it. It's Paul's Warrior Nation Posse. As you can see, it's a mix of the Pride of the Nikomata, and we've also got Cloud Runner. Yeah, Cloud Runner. She has a proper name in her, in, in her actual native name as well. I, for some reason, I always call it Aya Napa, but that's an island somewhere. Anyway, lovely colours. Lovely warm tones on here both in the skin tones on the on the posse and the feather work on the eagle it's all phenomenal and then you've got the lovely vibrancy on the totem poles uh totem markers there i really really like it and also wonderful base work with the little cacti on there which i, I think he's bought i don't think he's bought from store or 3d printed himself but Everything about this is, it's just competition worthy. This is what you'd want to have on display. Any, anyone would be proud to have this on display in their store or entering that into a competition, I think. Fantastic work. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've covered it all pretty much. The, the thing that drew me to it was like the bright colours and the cacti and like those totems are quite difficult to get right like it's hard to get the colors right for them and make them like pop and still look sort of like they've been in the desert for a while and a little bit faded so like it's done a really really good job on those the colors for the nekamata are all i think they're all similar to the ones that daz did for the studio paint job that they're, they're pretty close anyway and they're all really, really nice. Uh, like I say, I've I've gone for a more Thundercats themed colour scheme. So I like how the colour. While each of them is, each of them has their own colour scheme. That all t- there's colours in each that tie them together. Yeah. The sort of faded purple, which is evident on quite a lot of them, ties them together. Yeah. Um, the leather look really well thought out. Yeah. Not just. He's not just picked up every single model and just painted a model and then put it down and picked another model. He's thought about, how is this posse going to look? Yeah, yeah. The, the faded purple, the darker red, the, the sort of darker black armour pieces as well. It's just really, really nice. And like you say, the feather work is beautiful. The edge highlighting on the wingtip feathers, the blacker ones, with the white highlights on the edge... You could have took, I could have been a wildlife photographer of the year photo. They look like real feathers. Okay, so if you're new here, I love a Tesla bot, and Susan has done an insanely good job on these. Like the the work on the electric, the basing, the metal work, the Tesla generators on the back, the uniform colours across them all that would probably fit in. In fact, we know they fit in because, um, spoilers, she's done a lot of union recently and it ties all together very, very nicely. There was a lot of choice for me from this paint jobs that she did. But I cannot not include a Tesla bot because they are just such good models and these are just A plus gold star lovely lovely models she's done some really good work with the posing as well so we've got a combination of shields with rifles and batons there uh, just to give some variety the way they've been posed it's not just a rigid pose 
Um, they're looking in directions. They're holding their weapons in appropriate manners. Just excellent work. The modelling is just spot on because those are fiddly models to put together. They really are. To get them to hold in the position you actually want them in, I found very difficult. So we've a lot of patience has been used here to hold those together, to get them in the pose she wants them to be. Phenomenal. So this is my next pick, and as you can see, it's also by Susan, and it's a charge sergeant. I don't think I'd ever say this. There's very few models in the WWX range that I don't like, and the Charge Sergeant model is one of them, because I always thought it looked goofy. Big fat dude in a, essentially a gimp outfit with two whips. I did not like the model. What Susan's done with it, though, has changed my mind utterly about this model. It looked properly menacing. When you see it, it just looks goofy. But this looks menacing. This looks dangerous. This is the guy literally whipping you into the battle line to get you to face the right way and so on. The brutal drill master who literally whips you into shape. She's done some great work with the colours. It's leather, it's worn. The ironwork on the body is also all dusty and worn. It has been in combat. Pose the whips really well. What Those whips are actually on magnets. They come off and she can spin them round. By doing that and the posing just adds to the model, the way it looks. It's dynamic. The one piled in front of it looks like it's just been cracked and the next one is coming down. I love what you've done with this model because I cannot, under normal circumstances, do not like this model, but I love this one. Yeah, I mean, same for me. I don't think I've seen any charge sergeant painted up fully. I think it's always been the renders or on eBay when people are sending them. And this is just super menacing. I think it's the dark colour on the, the top half of the body it just makes it look very intimidating rather than like a light blue or something that would give it a little bit of a less of an edge. And I think the head being tilted it looks like it's tilted more forwards than in the renders. Maybe it's just a trick of a paint job. I'm not sure. No, I think she's done some slight conversion work to pose it, I think. There are multiple other pictures of this from other shots. This was just the one I picked for this. But I think some work has been done on the pose to make it more menacing. The mask that he wears looks menacing as well. Rather than, again, instead of just a, a, a gimp mask, it actually looks intimidating. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It just shows you that any model with a good paint job can look good. It doesn't it doesn't matter if you don't like it. Someone gives it the right colours, the right tones. It can make a model or it can break a model in some cases. Uh, and in this case, it is absolutely made the model 100%. So, this is my final pick for Wild West Exodus, Creation 7. Uh, it's an amazing model, as everybody knows, as you can very plainly see, and Jesse has given it a beautifully done paint job. I love the, the toned down colour scheme of it, the dual metals and the um, different eye colours on the face plates. The guns look really really sort of oily almost in places and it keeps the intimidation factor high with it being so sort of muted it looks very dark and menacing and scary and yeah really really good work and the, the like the rubber pipe work actually looks like it's made of rubber I'm not even slightly sure how that effect has been achieved but it looks like genuine rubber tubing going into the chest plate there it is chef's kiss good. It's heavy industrial. Mm. It is usually oily is the right word. The, look at the drill. You could almost rub your finger on that and it'd come off black on your finger. It looks that good and oily and grimy. 
like I said, such not subtle things like having the eye colours different, green and red there, um, little little bits of lighting in the chest and uh, little brass rivets here and there. The jeans, his trousers, he, they, he's even managed to make them look oily and dirty, like he's just stepped out of a, of a heavy furnace or somewhere like heavy, you know, one of those smelting plants that you see, you know, the end sequence of Terminator 2 where they're all doing the iron smelting. It looks like he's stepped out of that. I love weathering. It's one of my favourite techniques to see, and it's just perfectly done here. It really is. That's utterly intimidating, coming out of you out of a factory, ready to, ready to kill. Yeah. One of my favourite things about Creation 7 is every time I see somebody paint it, I always notice a new detail, like I didn't notice before, and now I can sort of see it quite clearly, is on top of his head, he's got like the plates like bolted onto his head. Oh yeah, so he has. And I've got this model and I haven't noticed that. Very, very cool. Off to the oceans, and as I've gone for one of my favourites, Enlightened, if I'm a sucker for distressing, I'm also a sucker for glow work. And slow that cat. His glow work is outstanding. I love it. This is not the only first thing he's done with glow, but oh, I saw these and I got to have them. First one I saw was actually the Icarus slash Deleus he's done. That is the same model. He's actually magnetised it so it comes apart and you can rebuild it as either class, which is no mean feat because... It's an absolute pig to do that for, because literally there's only two common parts for the, between the two models, and that's the hull and the launching ramp. Everything else comes off, after it's come off and remagnetized. So tip of the hat for that job. But look at the glow. Look at it. Again, it's one of those where you could swear blind there's LED inside that. The jets coming off the uh, Icarus's launching ramps as they go up, and the glow around the windows. And on the Dallas, you've got the wonderful menacing glow of the side those big plates on the side of it and glow in the center and then this lovely reddishness as the the veins coming out of the plate going to red on the edges like they're hot oh my goodness they're so good and then he's done the same again on the low tan and ketos there just glowing evilly the sergium agitators and the glow work on the light and the carapace Wonderfully done. Also, great work on the ocean, getting the foam around it where it's rising up and it looks, it just looks right. Yeah, the glow work is just insanely good. Like, I've seen the other inline stuff that he's done and it just works so well for the inline. It's got that uber mad science feel to it and it makes those ketos look really sinister you kind of expect it to be the other way around where maybe the darker tones would work for it but no it's very much made them look really evil and i think the posing on the one that's sort of more up straight works super well for it as well it's just giving it that extra oh no we're all gonna die vibe <laughs> <laughs> if only that was true for the rules <laughs> yeah. not yet we'll work we'll look at that yeah but I, the object object source lighting on the boats the glow around the bridges and the decks coming from the white lights there masterfully fought out yeah it's got a tron meets i don't know if you know batman beyond but the villain from that called blight who's like a radioactive glowing skeleton it's got like real sinister atomic glow vibes to it and I love it yeah yeah very it brings out the sci-fi into it mm. much more sci-fi than than traditional steampunk it's what it's great it, it's everything I would want in a model if only I could paint this well I would So, my first pick for Dystopian Wars. It's been a hot minute, but uh, 
Cohen's made his way back onto the gallery again. This has a little bit of a conversion to it. It's made the model look much better for me. I I really like the radar dish on the front. I think it just adds to the theme of the whole thing. Sleeker. Yeah, much sleeker. The little flags that are on it, the the dark colour scheme and the little decals on the front of it and the glow work on the windows and the Sternbringers. It is just... It's always good to see Cohen's work, but this is... This is immaculate. It's so, so good. It's very signature style. If I hadn't, I, 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 even without seeing his name on that, I would know who painted that. You know, such a great signature style. Little flags on one of the big giveaways. That's his little trademark with the flags on. His edge work with the edge highlighting. I, I love it. It's always a pleasure to see. And this is another stunning example. And I do agree. I do like the Asgard as is, but I do agree putting the radar dish on that does, I think, actually improve it. I do like the stat, the as is model that as intended, but that I think is a nice improvement. Yeah, it's just a nice little, very subtle and easy change. I imagine those platforms just plug into the turret socket and cover it up. Yeah. So it's not really a hard conversion to do, just. No, it's just swapping the platform out and putting that on. Yeah, so it doesn't affect the rules. It's still, still, still very clear what it is. Everything else is in place. It just looks, it just looks a bit cooler. Yeah. Okay, this is again my pick. As I said earlier, if I'm a sucker for glow work, I'm also a sucker for weathering, and this is so nicely weathered. This uh, this one's been left at the back of the shipyard for a while and then sailed out for something. It's the reserve reserve fleet. It's filthy. It it's dull grey. Uh, even even the whale looks malnourished somehow. But and the tank of the whale going is all horrible and green and stagnant. I love it. This is so so filthy. In a lighting can be all shiny and chrome. But we can also think of the, you know, the horrible sighting lightens and, you know, the chop shop cyborging and so on like that. And I think this really emphasises that aspect of the enlightened. Everything's a bit rusty, a bit grim. You wouldn't want to be stationed on this ship. Look at the rust. Look, everything looks gross and grim. And, oh, I love it. I just love it. The thing that I really like about it is the the finish on the non-metal parts of it is really, it's like really flat, smooth matte. It looks metallic without being metallic, if you know what I mean. Military, yeah, yeah. that military grey they paint ships in. Yeah, and it, it's it's done to perfect effect, plus, like you say, with the weathering on top of that, it just makes it so almost realistic like it could almost be give it a realistic background and I'd be like yeah I could believe that's actually sailing the seas quite easily it is really really nicely done and I love the purple highlight colours as well on the bridge in the back of the engine to make it look like it's glowing purple Yeah, it's not often you see purple as a, a glow for things, but I think it really works on this against the sort of grey blue. Come on, the engineer going, is it meant to be pur- glowing purple like that? Yeah, it'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's fine. We'll just, we'll just make sure the constructs service that bit. Fantastic work, Ram. Love it. So my final pick for Dystopian Wars, some objective platforms. Now, we have seen some objective platforms painted up to a really, really high standard, but Mike the Warhost has done a really, really nice job of these. They have an almost sort of metallic military green effect to them, and all the pipe work sort of painted in sort of coppery colours and silvers and there's the the red lights and the objective tokens on the top 
and the gun batteries have all been painted up super neatly in it. Like, just giving a little bit of extra attention to those details on the platforms does them absolute wonders because these look like they should really be part of a fleet rather than just being objective tokens, to be honest. Like, they they just look so nice. Uh, and it's made me really, really look forward to seeing people painting up some of the Union additional bits for their platform sets because, in theory, that should make them look super scary. Mm. I love the platform model. It just begs to be painted. I don't think you can badly paint these. No matter what level of painter skill you've got, they're going to look good because the of the... They just have lovely open areas for you to paint. But when you've got skill like this, you can make them really stand out. And he's so, as you say, he so has the metalwork looks. Again, we're getting this oily industrial feel to it. It's a working platform. We've got the lovely pickouts of the yellows on the on things like the landing pads and the and the brass brass work on the pipes. He's picked out as well. It, yeah. It's lovely, and we've got the blue. There's blues in the in the vault piles. Mm, yeah, it just really has upped it to the next level here. This is you know platforms done really well. This is my pick for terrain by Jerome. These little trees. You think, well, trees? What's about them? They're drawing. You put this on the Discord how he made these. They are literally just drawing pins that he's put a bit of flocking on. It's so simple. And it's not just one bit of flocking. As he describes it, use different colours of flocking to get multi layers of trees. And then pin them into your, pin them into your terrain. It's so simple. It's genius. Because they look perfect. That's, that's a group of trees. And you can just group up as many of those as you need to make little little uh, groves or spinnies or woods or whatever and it's the, the right scale and everything it's just one of these genius little ideas that everyone's probably going to look at this and go why the hell didn't I think of that because that's brilliant and just look at the rocks he's put them into as well look at the moss work on that and the grass and so on if I couldn't see the background you put that on water I'd swear to God that was a photo from an aircraft. And that's a real island. That's wonderful work. Yeah, he's done a super good job on these. I mean, this is not just good painting, it's good model making in general. Like, he's got the dirt layer underneath it, he's got the, the flock on top of it, he's got mixed flock, so it's not just a, a blanket colour of green. Insanely good. So, so good. I can't wait to see some photos of this with them on the table, with, with ships running around them. Yeah, yeah. It will look incredible. It really will. For my final pick, I picked this terrain by Stigidium Agitator on Discord. I love the little lot house and the little barn and everything. It is, again, more excellent model work, not just great painting but great modeling skills here i think some of this is 3d printed and i think the rocks and things are actually um, either sculpted or 3d printed i can't remember which one he did but yeah really really nice work on these it's the fact he's got the scale nailed on that i'm impressed with that lighthouse and that barn are the right size that's impressive work yeah right the the textures on he's got on the rocks, colour of the colour of the ground, lovely colour pops from the lighthouse and the barn there. And is that a small boat next to the barn on the pulled up on the beach? I can't quite make out what it is. I think so, yeah. But yeah. It's just really, really again, with the right background you could take photos of that and swear it's from the air from the air. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the, the ships added into the photo just make it a little bit better as well. So, really, really good stuff. Absolutely. Top notch to rain that. Right, so that is all of our picks for this month. Content wise, we have 
put out a dystopian wars unboxing of fortune and glory we may be talking to some very important people about this in the near future hopefully fingers crossed yep um barring any technical issues we should be able to get that done and published before the fortune and glory set actually comes out as well so very much looking forward to that you still have the post office finishing off to do I do if I can ever get time to sit down and get all the gear set up so I can film it which obviously takes takes longer than actually putting it together I think almost but yes I'm hoping to do that in the next few weeks I think our next battle is probably going to be with the fortune and glory set maybe with a few additions of other bits I'm certainly bringing fortune and glory to my next battle anyway let's put it that way yeah it should be Hopefully, I need yeah. to finish painting everything, and then that should be the battle report. Hopefully, well, yeah. And we also have plans are afoot to do a demo day. Our local, so we may do photos from that and a report of how that went. Maybe we'll see. Yep, so fingers crossed that uh, we can get that done. I don't know if it'll be this year or next year, but hopefully. It will be sooner rather than later, but we need to yeah. organise and sort out with the owner. So, and I think that's it. I don't think yeah. there's a lot else that there is to come. I'm almost finished building the fortune and glory stuff. I've just got the passenger stuff to do. I've done the union, which was fairly easy to build. The sultanate was a little bit harder, but not terrible. And so far, it's painting up really nicely. I'm enjoying painting it, so fingers mm. crossed it will all be done by the time we come for battle report. I really like your colour scheme you've got on this, got on the Sultanate there. I think that really works. That sand, that muted sand you've gone for, really, 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 really nice. It's turned out I'm, I'm, really well. Right, well, that'll do us for this Markov's Gallery. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you in the next one. Happy trails, pilgrims. <laughs>